Good morning. Thanks for joining me today for our daily devotion. Glad you're here. Hope you had a great night and are looking forward to this beautiful day. A lovely fall day we have ahead of us. Almost warm enough to open up the windows. We'll see how warm that gets. <clears throat> the cat shaming photo of the day is a stinky goblin baby and it's a black cat. Stinky goblin baby. <coughs> I think that's funny. Um, the daily extra is poem. The harvest moon glows round and bold in pumpkin shades outlined in gold. Illuminating airy forms are natural as candy corn. Beware what dare crawls up your sleeve for tis the night called Hollow's Eve. And this that's by Rochelle E. Goodrich. Hey, as I mentioned yesterday, we have a boatload of birthdays to celebrate today. So happy birthday to Ray Velasek, Shirley Kudlacek, Barb Westman, and Caden Hoffman. We have four big birthdays to celebrate today. So if you're celebrating birthday today too, happy birthday to these four and to you. Um, the devotion today is based in Luke 10. Um, the uh, Good Samaritan story, and it's called, He Changed the Question. Which of these was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of robbers? <clears throat> Jesus' propensity for answering a question with another question is on full display in this interchange with the lawyer. The lawyer wanted to know, who is my neighbor? And Jesus responded by telling a story and then asking back, which of these was a neighbor? The lawyer was looking for Jesus to tell him types of people he was to love, the boundaries for his obligation to love. He was confident that he had already cleared the bar and just wanted to hear the teacher say aloud what, aloud what it was. Jesus would not comply. <clears throat> his story prevents the lawyer and prevents us from looking down on our noses while we do good deeds or from prejudicing, prejudging, excuse me, prejudging anyone as out of bounds. Jesus makes the reviled Samaritan the hero, and he makes the neighbor into a verb, not a category of person. Are there questions you ask Jesus mainly to justify yourself? If so, what question do you suppose he would answer back to, or he would put back to you? Whose story would he tell to flip your script? Hmm. Let us pray. God, show us the pictures of mercy that we are not seeing, and then help us to do likewise. And we give thanks to you through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have protected us through the night from all harm and danger. We ask that you would also protect us today from sin and all evil, so that our life and actions may please you. Into your hands we commend ourselves, our bodies, our souls, and all that is ours. Let your holy angels be with us, so that the wicked foe may have no power over us. Amen. <laughs> <clears throat> you know, the Good Samaritan story is an example of what Jesus does best. He takes our questions, flips them around, <clears throat> and makes us think. He, he challenges our presuppositions. He challenges our prejudices. He challenges what we think so that we can think more broadly. Uh, we love to have boundaries, and we love to say who's in and who's out, who's saved and who's damned and who's who's good and who's bad. I mean, we, as human beings, I'm feeling this knees, sorry. Uh, <clears throat> as human beings, we love to have those kinds of categories. And Jesus comes and comes along and turns all of that on its ear and says, you know, the very one that you thought to be damned is actually the hero of the story. Because you know that Jews and Samaritans hated each other. For, for a long, long time. <clears throat> and then he, the Samaritan man, ends up being the hero and the one who shows mercy. And in so many places, Jesus says, go and do likewise. So I suppose that's, I don't suppose, that's the word for today, is that we are to go and do likewise. God has shown mercy to us in, in Christ by loving us, forgiving us, accepting us as God's children. That's an act of mercy because God does not have to do that. 
but God loves us and God chooses to call us and claim us and make us God's own. And so we then are commanded to go and do likewise. <clears throat> to, as I say, nearly every day, to go and share God's love and light in the world, not because we need it, but because our neighbor needs it. And who is our neighbor? Well, everybody is our neighbor. Everyone is the neighbor. That's the thing. And it's not just people. It's not just people. It's the environment. It's the trees. It's the sky. It's water. It's how we treat the planet. The planet is our neighbor. Creation is our neighbor. Um, how we treat the planet. I mean, all, all those things. That's, that's all neighbor love. And, and it's good for us to show mercy to our neighbors, whether they're people, animals, plants, the air that we breathe, sky, water. It's so important that, that we are considerate and courteous about all those things <clears throat> because we are commanded to show mercy to our neighbors just as God showed mercy to us. Hey, have a great day. Enjoy this beautiful fall day. I hope you get outside to play. Um, I'm going to try and get outside at least for a walk, if not to play, because I have a lot of work to do today. But um, I hope you find a way to celebrate the beauty of this day and share some light and love with someone else today. Have a great day, and I'll see you back here on Monday.